everyone. I'm Jensine Bard, and welcome to Testimony, where truth is told, lives are changed, and hope is given. Revelation 12:11 tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, a testimony of your story for His glory. He has witnessed Jesus to the heads of state in Russia, the U.S., and around the world, pleading the cause of Christ and pleading for those still unjustly incarcerated in the prisons he suffered and was tortured in for nearly 10 years, three terms of three years with continuing harassments and threats even on the day of his wedding. The man they called, quote, the Billy Graham of Russia, held fast the confession of his faith and his beloved wife, Maria, and family. Here for part three of my four-part exclusive with daughter, ministry partner, and translator, Vera Bondarenko, chaplain, is her father, Evangelist Joseph Bondarenko, author of his just released, The KGB's Most Wanted. Evangelist Bondarenko, welcome back to Testimony. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you. Joseph, your book is a page-turner I could not put down, and the fact you had to be urged to write it shows the humility of which you've lived your life, in my view, uncompromising, bold, and courageous, fearless in the face of death. For part three of our time together today, I want to talk about your life as an evangelist, mobilizing some of the largest crusades in Russia's history, affected your family, how it affected your family, who spent years at a time away from you because of your incarceration, starting with your wedding to your beloved Maria. Would you please just start to tell us that story? начиная с вашей свадьбы с Марией, а, так как вы организовывали многие а, массовые евангелизации и также находились в тюрьме. Как все это отразилось на вашей семье? Ну, это э, было все к славе Божией и к радости, и к большому уроку или закалке моей семьи. Well, uh, that was uh, that served uh, a great um, experience for my family to become stronger in God. Господь дал очень удивительную мне жену. Это величайший подарок от Бога. God has given me a wonderful gift in the face of my beloved wife, and I considered it to be a great honor. И она несла служение за меня и за себя в семье. And I can tell you that her ministry is greater than mine because she was ministering um, both on her behalf and my behalf, being a mother and a father to our children. Она и детей воспитывала, и собрание в доме совершалось, потому что везде трудно было допросы, вызовы, угрозы, и все это нанесла вот, с помощью Божьей. She has been a great helper of, uh, to me in my ministry because she had to bring up our kids first, and then she was involved with the church activities, and we had church services in our house, so she always was available for other people and she served other people alongside with me and she endured a lot of uh, repressions a lot of persecution uh, herself as she was or had to be um, uh, questioned by the KGB and had searches in our house so she had a lot in her plate or on her shoulders and I admire her for her bravery Детей обижали в школе, изгоняли в школе за то, что они не принимали значков Ленина или галстуку пионерских, не давали учиться в, воск... в школе музыкальной, изгнали моих дочерей, но они продолжали любить Господа и крепко держаться веры. 
uh, my wife, along with my children, all shared in my sufferings, and uh, because they were mistreated as much as myself at school, uh, their neighbor kids were mocking them. Uh, in the society, they were put down constantly. Uh, my kids were not allowed to study in a music school, and all of those hardships that they had to endure, for Christ's sake, they did with me. Через весь рок звучал в моем сердце голос маленьких моих детей, особо сын Даниил маленький кричал на улице: "Папа, меня не пускают, нас не пускают к тебе". Uh, through all of my imprisonment, I could not get rid of a voice of my only son, uh, who was a very little then, as he screamed uh, into the ears of the guards who did not let my children into the trial process, that, uh, Daddy, Daddy, they are not letting me in, and I want to see you. And I heard his voice through all of the years of imprisonment, and I'm so grateful that he, um, you know, they were able to endure Дети все стали, как бы пошли у меня, они свидетельствовали о Боге в школе, они рассказывали подругам и друзьям, за это терпели побои и нарекания, но они продолжали свидетельствовать, любить и посещать собрания. And I'm very proud of all of my kids who, against all of the um, uh, streams that they went, uh, were able to be witness, be a witness of God's love to other people, and they boldly shared uh, the testimony of Christ with their schoolmates and with their neighbors and other kids. So I'm, I'm very blessed to have these kids in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Evangelist Joseph Bonadarenko and his daughter and translator, Vera Bonadarenko Chaplin. Uh, his book, The KGB's Most Wanted, at your wedding, 2,000 people showed up from everywhere across Russia, Czechoslovakia. It was not just a wedding, but people back in that day turned it as a time to get together for fellowship. They hungered for it, and yet even at your wedding, the KGB militia was there, and you were targeted, and soon after your wedding, you had to leave your loved ones, your family members, to escape. Talk a little bit about that in our remaining moments. После свадьбы, даже на вашей свадьбе, 2000 людей присутствовало, и даже больше. Люди со всех сторон Советского Союза приехали, чтобы побывать на вашей свадьбе, для того, чтобы пообщаться, потому что не было такой возможности для верующих. Ну и тогда КГБ старалась разрушить это мероприятие. И затем после свадьбы вам пришлось бежать, можно сказать, от семьи, из города, в котором вы хотели жить. Скажите, пожалуйста, а что случилось после этого? Я и перед свадьбой тоже, они угрожали меня арестовать, не дать сочетания, поэтому я эту ночь прятался на кладбище, чтобы потом э, прийти утром на сочетание. Well, even before the wedding took place, a night before, because the KGB um, uh, threatened to arrest me before the wedding, I had to hide. I had to hide through the night um, in the cemetery, pretty much, to escape their arrest and be present for the wedding. So that started even a night before, as you mentioned that. Когда бы перебывалось, думал я, что будет восстание в Бресте, там граница Польши будет мятеж какой-то. Maria's family lived on the border, on the Polish border, and KGB thought that it would be a Christian protest or a revolution, if you will, and that's why they were so on alert not to let this wedding happen. На вокзале милиции КГБ собрались, чтобы обсудить, как, что это за брак. Yes, and KGB strategized how they could actually destroy and not let this wedding go on. Ну, после свадьбы сразу же новые на второй день пришли, чтобы арестовать меня, и нам пришлось и с отцом жены убегать. Yes, and uh, because, uh, praise God, the wedding went on, but two days later we had to escape uh, with uh, my father-in-law uh, from the city because there was a great danger for me to stay in the city. 
мы прыгали через э, забор, попали в воду, там в глубокую яму, отец попал, и я его вытянул, и мы бежали дальше, чтобы уйти с, от преследования. Exactly, that's in your book, the KGB's most wanted. And Jesus says, whenever they persecute you, you, you have to flee, and we decided to flee the city. Далеко поехали в горы, в Грузию, и там устроились на и там же не было верующих, и вскоре уже родилась одна семья, покаялась, и and начались маленькие служения. And we started ministering to people around us, and there were no church, but we had uh, several families that became believers through our witness, and we started, you know, more and more ministering to no, other people. Сюда, уезжать, and as a, as, a, as a leader in the underground Baptist church, at the time and the underground movement there was a lot of need for me to be in a different place than Georgia so I had to go and look for other places that would be uh, more effective for my ministry and, uh, and uh, it happened that I uh, became uh, illegal pretty much and went underground because there was a lot of threat for me being arrested again. Right. You were basically a fugitive as far as the KGB was yes. concerned. You were underground for five years. You pastored a church for 27 years, so not only are you an evangelist, but you're also a pastor and a mobilizer of mass crusades, which we're going to talk about more in our last segment. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Evangelist Joseph Bondarenko. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and his daughter, ministry partner and translator for segment three of our talk today, Vera Bondarenko Chaplin. I just want to alert our listeners to your wonderful ministry. You are now here in the United States in California. For anyone wanting more information, they can go to goodcallministries.org, Good call ministries.org and ask you and your father to speak television radio whatever the media outlet we are so thrilled to be able to showcase your father's story which you had to prompt him to write he's done an amazing things and worked with billy graham and famous evangelists and astronauts and it's all in the book ladies and gentlemen the kgb's most wanted if you need revival in your own heart and in your relationship with Jesus Christ, you need to get this book. We are losing our freedoms in this country today, and we are hearing from one who never had the freedoms that we do here in America. We need to know what to do not to lose those freedoms going forward. We're going to hear more from Joseph next week to talk about this very thing next week on Testimony. God bless you both, and thank you for your time today. God bless you, too. Thank you. <laughs> Testimony is a global broadcast made possible by the generous contributions of our valued partners at Jensen Bard Ministries and you, our listening audience. Together, we are reaching souls for Christ, one testimony at a time. If you would like information on how you can support this broadcast with your tax-deductible gift, please visit us at jensenbard.com. That's one word, J-E-N-S-I-N-E-B-A-R-D dot com. And join the conversation at our Facebook page, Testimony with Jensen Bard. Thank you for listening, and please join us again for Testimony. For the last three weeks, you've heard just a sampling of the incredible life and journey of a man Russia's KGB called, quote, the Ten Most Wanted. Why? Preaching and teaching Jesus was considered a crime punishable by incarceration. 
The prison sentences levied were horrific and cruel, and higher education was blocked, property and goods taken. They, quote the Christians, were known as sectarians who dared defy communist rule. But that didn't stop Joseph Bondarenko, imprisoned for nearly 10 years, humiliated, beaten, tortured, and separated from his family. Joseph would not renounce his faith in Jesus Christ, but instead chose to forgive his captors, lead them to Christ, and then be used by God to forever change the landscape of Russia, launching massive crusades, churches built, and fellow evangelists Billy Graham, Louis Palau, and others coming alongside in helping make history for the cause of Christ. Would you welcome back to Testimony, a wonderful honor indeed, evangelist, pastor, and founder of the Good Call Ministries, and author of his just-released, the KGB's Most Wanted, Evangelist Joseph Bondarenko. Evangelist Bondarenko, welcome back to Testimony. I'm very pleased to be with you today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In part four of our four-part series today, Joseph, if I may, first of all, I just want to thank you for sharing your amazing story and the legacy you are leaving for generations of Christians to come. And in my view, a must-read of inspiration, hope, courage, and miracles. You've lived it. You know. So for this last segment today... I would love for you, as an evangelist and pastor and leader, to address the global events you see unfolding around the world today and here in the U.S. where you now reside. Starting with the persecuted church, point in case, Pastor Saeed Abedini, he's been imprisoned in Iran for nearly two years for his faith, and his wife's seemingly unheard plea to government officials in our nation, nothing's happened. He's still in prison. Pastor, what would you do? Скажите, пожалуйста, что бы вы делали, если бы происходили те события, которые происходят сегодня во всем мире? Что вы видите, что происходит? И пастор Саид, допустим, который сегодня отбывает заключение за веру в Бога, что мы должны делать и что вы бы сделали в данной ситуации? Да, мы думаем, что очень важным и необходимым было бы это объединяться. У нас были посты и молитвы очень постоянными. Мы даже продолжаем их и здесь, в Америке, что было у нас тогда в трудные годы. Молодежь призывать исполнять здравое, держаться здравого учения, высоких Божьих стандартов, высокой Божьей морали. Well, uh, looking at what's happening in the world today and a lot of persecution that takes place uh, around the world, uh, it brings me back in those days when we, as a family, I personally experienced all of that harsh persecution in our own lives. And I realize what we did then, we just cling to each other so much. We cling to the Lord. And most importantly, we pray together. We have those specific days in our uh, week time that we would set aside to pray and fast for each other and for those who suffered and uh, went through uh, uh, horrific circumstances and we felt the power of prayer that was penetrating our hearts and our circles and God was moving powerfully so I believe today we as, as a body of believers have to join in together for First of all, uh, encouraging each other to pray for those who are suffering in Jesus' sake, and especially our younger people to know that these sufferings could happen not only to people that are experiencing in other countries, but to them as well. So to bring that awareness in the hearts of our believers here in our country, in the, in the States ходатайствовать, писать в правительство. Мы делегации имели в правительстве. Нас арестовывали, нас пугали, закрывали. Но, выпуск... Но мы снова продолжаем
стали идти, ходатайствовать, молиться, объединять народ, всем рассказывать, побуждать народ, чтобы писать письма в поддержку семьям, тем, которые страдают, постоянно молиться за них, поддерживать материально и духовно. As in those days, things have not changed today. We are the same people with the same uh, problems and suffering. So I would um, urge you to stand together and be advocates for those that have no voice, uh, to join our efforts in interceding before the government, interceding before our own government for the release of those brothers and sisters such as Pastor Saeed and others, and just be their voice and um, help them know that we are praying for them, we are encouraging them. Simple things such as writing letters to those people and, uh, you know, extending our love in every Every tangible way possible would really break up their spirits in those times of trials. Когда брат Джеймс Ирвин, астронавт, посетил по моему приглашению Союз, я уже сидел в тюрьме, он правительство явился в Москве и сказал, что я хочу посетить. Пример сказал президент, что это преступник. Он сказал, это мой брат. По его ходатайству дали мне две минуты свидания с, с семьей и на несколько дней разрешили иметь Библию. When during my third imprisonment um, in Krasnodar, Russia, one of the American astronauts, uh, my friend uh, Jim Irvin, came to visit Russia for my invitation, and he came to Moscow specifically to intercede for my release before the government, before the Russian government. And when he was given an opportunity to talk to the government in Moscow, he was told that Joseph Bondarenko is a criminal and he deserves to be behind bars. But my brother in Christ, Jim Irvin, who is now to be with the Lord, said, no, he's not a criminal, he's my brother in Christ. And although the government did not release me from prison, but because of his intercession, uh, I was given a privilege of seeing my family for at least two minutes, and I was given a privilege to have the Bible for several days in my cell. So that made a great difference in my uh, days of suffering. So he was not ashamed to call me a brother before the government, before those who have the authority. Вся, и интересно, что все начальство лагерное того всего э, города было в беспокойстве это несколько недель, что у меня была Библия, вроде у меня там была атомная бомба. And, it, and so interesting that when they allowed me to have the Bible um, in my cell uh, and to read it for a couple of days, uh, the whole uh, uh, prison was alert and they were so on guard As, as if I had a dynamite in my cell that would explode. That was so much threat to them. The Bible has a real power, and they were afraid of this power of God. Единодушных молитв, объединенных детей Божьих по всему миру, они боялись атеизм больше сатана, чем, можно сказать, военных каких-то действий. A powerful uh, community of believers praying together uh, presented a bigger threat to the communists or atheists than any other nuclear power of other countries. Поэтому очень важно быть мужественным, быть бескомпромиссными и слушать Бога больше, чем людей. And I urge my fellow believers across this country and beyond to be not compromising our faith, to be courageous and to listen God more than listening to people. Amen, amen. I just amen. want to interject here, Pastor Joseph. You chose to stay in Russia when offers of amnesty and escape to several countries, ours included, came your way in, I think, 1978. That decision would ultimately land you in prison for a third time, another three years, and while you would eventually come to the U.S. in 1998, my question, and I think others would want to know, why did you choose to stay when it would have been conceivably 
easier to leave. В 78 году вам предлагалось убежище в различные страны, включительно Америку. Почему в то время вы решили остаться, и это решение, за этим решением последовал ваш третий арест? Объясните, почему все же вы остались в вашей стране? Я скажу, что из самого детства я имел такое призвание, Божий дар, вот, организовывать людей из, из улицы, из школы, говорить о Боге, вести в церковь, в институте, в тюрьме. Поэтому у меня твердое было желание продолжать, невзирая на гонения, невзирая на репрессии, это любовь к нашему народу. Любовь, у меня не было ненависти и озлобления, а большая любовь донести жажду всему народу правде о спасении. Uh, since my early uh, days, I know and I believe I was called by God to be an evangelist and to bring the message of salvation to my countrymen and to people around the world. And I had that passion in my heart to share this gospel message, a changing message to people of all walks of life. I started doing it as a little boy with my school friends and then at the university and then moved on with the younger people, uh, teaching them the ways of the Lord and to the children. And then I believe God has given me a great gift of... Uh, organizing people together, mobilizing those people. And because of that passion that burned within me by the power of God, I knew I had to stay and bring the message of hope to those people that probably would never have a chance to hear it in a communist world. So that was my uh, priority, and God helped me make this decision to continue preaching the uncompromised word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to world-renowned evangelist Joseph Bondarenko, an author of his riveting life story, The KGB's Most Wanted. You can learn more about evangelist Bondarenko's ministry and outreaches by going to goodcallministries.org. That's goodcallministries.org. And get this incredible book, a great, anointed, and inspiring read, a life changer. Pastor Joseph and Vera, thank you so much for being with us today on Testimony. Your life, your witness of Jesus Christ is life changing. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and thank you so much again, Jesse. Testimony is a global broadcast made possible by the generous contributions of our valued partners at Jensen Bard Ministries and you, our listening audience. Together, we are reaching souls for Christ, one testimony at a time. If you would like information on how you can support this broadcast with your tax-deductible gift, please visit us at jensinebard.com. That's one word, J-E-N-S-I-N-E-B-A-R-D.com. And join the conversation at our Facebook page, Testimony with Jensine Bard. Thank you for listening. And please join us again for Testimony.